Have you ever wondered how much the world is worth and how to make sense of the millions, billions, and trillions of dollars quoted in the news? In this video, we look at 100 data points to get a feel for these values floating around. We built things from the ground up, starting with numbers we encounter in our everyday life so we have something to refer back to when we reach the insane levels of value we come to at the end of this video. To get started with something from our day-to-day -day life, the US currently issues banknotes in seven denominations, from one to $100. Now, let's start putting things into perspective by looking at what you can spend this money on. Rent is one of the most important outgoings for most of us, but prices range widely between cities. Few examples from around the world include Buenos Aires, Mumbai, Moscow, Tokyo, Paris, Hong Kong, London, Los Angeles, Zurich, Miami, San Francisco, Singapore, New York. New York City has the most expensive apartments in the world where you pay almost $4,000 a month for a one-bedroom apartment in the city center, more than 10 times the amount you would spend in Buenos Aires. We also see that rent in London is double that of Paris and two and a half times that of Tokyo. To continue with a few more comparisons, let's first convert monthly rent to annual rent. Now we see that for one month's rent in New York City, you can afford a whole year's worth of rent in Buenos Aires. It's generally said that you should budget 30% of your income for rent. Or in other words, your salary should be more than three times your rent. Now, what are the types of jobs you should be looking for? Median salaries in New York for 10 example jobs include chef, teacher, accountant, nurse, architect, software engineer, attorney, dentist, physician, management. So what can we take away from this? The average chef and teacher in New York would have to spend almost their entire salary to rent an average apartment. This means they can live in the city but would no longer have any money left to save or even eat. If we accept that 30% of your income should be spent on rent, then not even attorneys or dentists can afford a place to live in New York City. Something is fundamentally wrong when people have to choose between squeezing their budgets, moving out of the city center, or living with roommates. But there's still demand for these apartments, and that has got to be coming from somewhere. Things make more sense if we look at the average wages for the top 10, 5, 1, and 0.1% of the US population. This puts some perspective around movements such as Occupy Wall Street, which emerged in 2011 as a response to the growing inequality in the US and around the world between the wealthiest 1% and the rest of the population. Things become even more extreme if we look at the salaries for the CEOs of 10 well-known S&P 500 companies. American Airlines, Delta Airlines, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Walmart, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Microsoft, Apple, Google. Let's start comparing this back to some of the earlier numbers for average salaries. The CEO of JP Morgan earns 500 times more than the average accountant, while the CEO of Google earns about 4,000 times more than the average teacher. To put this immense gap into perspective, you could have started working as a teacher on a $50,000 salary the year of the birth of Jesus Christ, and over 2,000 years later, you would still only have earned half the money that the CEO of Google earns in one year. But things get even bigger when we look at individuals by their net worth, meaning by the value of everything a person owns. Ten famous examples include Kanye West, rapper, producer, and fashion designer, considered one of the most influential and controversial figures in music. Michael Jordan, former basketball player regarded as one of the greatest of all time. Donald Trump, businessman, TV personality, and former president of the United States. Stop the count. Surely this is as high as it gets. Or is it? George Lucas, filmmaker and pioneer in special effects, best known for creating the Star Wars and Indiana Jones franchises. Rupert Murdoch, CEO of News Corp, which owns Fox News, The Wall Street Journal, and The New York Post. Mark Zuckerberg, founder and CEO of Facebook, which now owns Instagram and WhatsApp. Warren Buffett, business tycoon and one of the most successful investors in the world, with holdings in Apple, Coca-Cola, and Bank of America. Bill Gates, 
founder of Microsoft, one of the world's largest and most influential tech companies. Jeff Bezos, founder and CEO of Amazon, who turned the former online bookstore to a global e-commerce giant. Elon Musk, founder and CEO of Tesla and the newly minted owner of Twitter, and also the richest individual on the planet. Still remember that teacher in New York City getting by on $50,000 a year and who'd have to spend their entire annual salary to afford the average rent for an apartment in the city? There are three and a half million housing units in New York, and Elon Musk could rent them all out for a whole year and still have $80 billion of his fortune left. But what if we stop looking at individuals and start looking at companies? Looking at the largest companies by revenue, the top 10 include CVS Health, the largest pharmacy and healthcare company in the US, making most of its money selling prescription drugs. If you ever wondered why healthcare in the US is so expensive, this is where your money goes. China State Construction, the state-owned real estate conglomerate is one of the largest construction companies in the world. Volkswagen, the German automotive company which includes Audi, Bentley, Bugatti, Lamborghini and Porsche and has developed popular models such as the Volkswagen Beetle. Apple, the mega tech company based in California, which revolutionized the industry with iconic devices such as the iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Saudi Aramco, Saudi Arabia's state-owned oil and gas company whose access to massive oil reserves give it significant influence on the global energy market. China Petrochemical, China's state-owned oil and gas company is one of the largest integrated energy companies in the world involved in everything from exploration, production and refining to marketing and distribution. China Petroleum China's second major state-owned oil and gas company, which is also headquartered in Beijing and together also generates revenues in excess of $400 billion every year. China State Grid China's state-owned and largest electricity company in the world, responsible for the transmission and distribution of electricity across China. Amazon the world's largest e-commerce company with operations in cloud computing services, digital streaming, smart devices, and groceries. Walmart, the world's largest retailer, operating a chain of hypermarkets, discount department, and grocery stores, making it the dominant force in the retail industry. If we switch from the value of goods and services sold to the total values of these companies, we reach completely new heights. There are now a few mega-cap companies in the world reaching valuations of 1 trillion US dollars. Amazon, valued at almost three times its revenue given impressive growth and globally expanding customer base. Alphabet, the parent company of Google, not even in the top 10 by revenue, but it's the fourth most valuable company in the world. Its sky-high valuation comes from dominating the global search engine market with powerful search algorithms and vast amount of user data, making targeted advertising a goldmine for the company. Saudi Aramco, ranked sixth by revenue but considered one of the most profitable companies ever, Amnesty International hit out at the company's recent shocking annual profit as they benefit from soaring energy prices fueled by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Microsoft, one of the most extreme examples between revenue where company is ranked only 31st and valuation, where the company is second. Their insane profitability comes from dominating the PC market for decades, with its operating system Windows, as well as applications such as Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Apple, welcome to the new age. Only ranked seventh by revenue, Apple is by far the most valuable company in the world, and the first company that ever reached a valuation exceeding $3 trillion. The only way up from here is to look at things on a country level. A country's GDP, or gross domestic product, is the market value of all goods and services from a nation in a given year. The top five countries by this measure include India, welcome to the new most populous country in the world. India has surpassed China with a population of 1.4 billion people, and India's economy is driven by domestic consumption, which accounts for 70% of its GDP. Germany, with a highly developed social market economy that is also the largest economy in Europe. Germany is one of the largest exporters globally of automobiles, machinery, and chemicals. Japan, known for its advanced technology and innovation, is at the forefront of developing cutting-edge electronics and robotics, which helped boost its productivity. 
From here, we're taking a giant leap to the top two players. China, historically the most populous country in the world until recently overtaken by India. It still runs an economy that is five times larger. China is the world's largest manufacturing economy and exporter of goods, and has the fastest growing domestic consumer market. The United States of America, the world's largest economy by GDP, accounting for a quarter of global economic activity. The US dollar is the world's reserve currency, backed by a large market in US treasuries, and has the world's largest stock exchanges by value and volume. Now, besides all these valuations, how much actual money exists in the world right now? This depends on how we define money. The total amount of physical money covering all banknotes and coins is estimated to be worth more than $8 trillion. If, in addition to all the physical money in circulation, you also include deposits and checking and savings accounts, then the value of easily accessible money around the world stands at $49 trillion. If, in addition to all the money in circulation and all deposits, you also include other types of deposits that are readily convertible into cash, we reach the global money supply at a staggering $83 trillion. And now, looking at this at a global level, we begin to hit our valuation peaks. $104 trillion worth of goods and services are produced every year, or more than $3 million every single second. Global GDP, which stood at $50 trillion at the turn of the millennium, is expected to reach $250 trillion at the end of 2060. But we're not quite at the peaks yet. The value of all the stocks in the world add up to $109 trillion, of which the US alone accounts for more than 40%. Remember our example from earlier? Apple alone contributes $3 trillion here. Bonds are issued by governments and corporations when they want to raise money. When you buy a bond, you're giving out a loan and in turn receive interest payments. The global bond market is one of the world's largest markets in the world, and it has grown from below $20 trillion just four decades ago to $133 trillion today. The danger here is that we're currently seeing interest rates rising faster than at any other time in recent history, and just one percentage point increase in interest rates means an additional $1.3 trillion have to be paid as interest on this growing debt pile. The market value of all the oil remaining in the world stands at $138 trillion, exceeding the global money supply and the value of the global equity and bond markets. Real estate is the largest and most important asset class in the world, with all houses, skyscrapers, and other properties estimated to be worth more than $280 trillion. This figure is more than 12 times the GDP of the US and more than 18 times the GDP of China. More than 20% of these values are located in North America, even though only 6% of the global population lives there. Global debt includes the amount of money owed by companies, governments, and individuals around the world, and it now exceeds $300 trillion. This number is almost 50 trillion higher than before the COVID pandemic, and it's still expected to grow due to geopolitical tensions, aging populations, and the increased cost of healthcare. Global wealth measures the net worth of the entire world as all assets, minus all liabilities, which, according to a calculation by Credit Suisse, now stands at $460 trillion. The majority comes from North America, which accounts for more than one-third of global wealth, whilst Africa contributes only 1% to the total. However, things don't end here. A derivative is a financial instrument whose value depends on the performance of another underlying asset. For example, stocks, bonds, commodities, and currencies. In simple terms, derivatives are side bets between two parties on how a completely different security will perform. They can be trades on listed exchanges, but also privately over the counter, which makes the size of the market hard to track. The low-end estimate for the size of the global derivative market is estimated to be above $500 trillion. And the higher end is estimated at $1 quadrillion. In simple terms, this means that there are financial instruments or side bets outstanding in the global financial market that exceed the global money supply by more than 10 times and the amount of physical money by more than 100 times. As a reminder, the financial crisis of 2008 was primarily caused by derivatives or mortgages, and the derivative market is still insanely large today. 
And now for our last data point. To conclude, we can now add all the assets on the planet that we've gone through in this video. This includes tangible assets such as buildings, infrastructure, machinery, natural resources, and intellectual property, as well as intangible financial assets held by households, governments, corporations, and banks, such as stocks, bonds, pension funds, cash, and deposits. All of this gives us a final number of one and a half quadrillion dollars. If you enjoyed this video, please like and leave a comment. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to my new channel and turn on notifications.